sprinkler heads. There's a lot of them on the market. I'm going to show you what they look like and which ones you should be using on your property. Anatomy 101 of a sprinkler system. Lesson six, sprinkler heads. This lesson includes get to the point and don't confuse me sentences on the screen. Stick around to the end of this short video to get your free download to help you identify what kind of sprinklers you have and what kind you should consider when you replace them. Remember the days when the old standbys were referred to as pop-ups and rainbirds? Remember when gasoline was only 25 cents and burl cream was cool? Well, today is a new day and we've come a long way. I'll attempt to briefly educate without overwhelming. The pop-ups are still around, but they are not brass anymore. Those were tough as nails, but they were water wasters. Were limited on spray patterns and weren't sealed, so bugs like earwigs would get in them and clog the nozzles. Blah. Today our pop-ups are plastic and the quality ones have great seals and many spray patterns including easily adjustable ones. The commonly known rainbirds were invented some 70 years ago here in our wonderful state of California and were named according to their appearance and function. They are technically called impact sprinklers. Those are still around but are not used in new landscapes. The plastic pop-up impacts have been replaced with gear-driven rotor sprays. The plastic impact pop-up The plastic impact pop-ups pop up <laughs> out of a canister or can that can fill with grass, dirt and rocks. The new rotor sprays are sealed units so that eliminates those problems. There's nothing magical about a pop-up. If you need to irrigate a flower bed area of your landscape, a pop-up per se is not the answer. Pop-ups are intended to be stealthy and stay flush with the soil, not above it. I've seen pop-ups on risers two or three feet high. That defeats the whole purpose of being a pop-up. If you need some height to reach over an object or an incline, there are now six inch and 12 inch pop-ups. A technique for flower beds that is usually preferred is to put what's called a shrub body on a riser, you know, a, a UV resistant threaded pipe, and then screw the spray nozzle onto the shrub body. If you have large beds, then you can screw on a rotor spray head onto the riser that is designed to be on the riser. It's not in a pop-up body. Well, those are the two main sprinkler heads in our industry, standard pop-ups and rotor sprays. Just remember not to mix the two types on the same sprinkler line due to the conflicting amount of time the two require to run. See my last video called Programming a Controller for Running Runtime Tips. There are many variations of this, these to suit your needs, including ones with pressure regulators or check valves built in. And in another video, we'll go into some more detail on some of the other sprinklers out there. I hope this series has been a help. For some unknown reason, I didn't do an article on drip systems, but I will be producing some on that subject, so look for those. Hey, I just happen to have a free download that can help you with this. This is the one I told you about at the beginning of the video. This download has photos of most of the common sprinkler valves, so you can identify which ones you have and handy tips about them. Just click here or download below to claim it and begin making your life a lot easier. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If so, please like it, share it, and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you ring that bell so you can get notices when we send out new videos or post new videos. Um, if you missed the previous videos in this fun series, click here. Whatever questions you have about your sprinkler system or landscape, I'll have those here.